Ryu is the face of fighting games. For almost 35 years, he's persisted as a character recognised by almost everyone, even those not interested in fighting games or even video games at all. His consistent appearances as the protagonist of Street Fighter, as well as his absolutely endless crossover appearances, seriously, it's insane how many games he's in, have solidified him as a bastion of the gaming landscape. As a result, he's had a lot of time for his character to develop. And despite this, he stayed mostly the same stoic, lone martial arts master, with occasional sparks of interesting plot points flaring up. While Ryu's character has a very solid foundation, Capcom's handling of it over the series' history has made it somewhat of a mess held together by the metaphorical duct tape of his core values and legacy. Ryu's core concept is that of a wandering warrior, living an incredibly minimalistic life. He owns almost no material possessions, quite literally carrying his life on his back in a single duffel bag, and chooses to wear his karate gear at almost all times. It's worth noting that Ryu isn't actually homeless due to poverty. He evidently has some money, being able to travel around the world to train and pay for food to support himself. He instead chooses to travel without a fixed home, in order to avoid anchoring himself to one place and stagnating in a life too comfortable. Ryu's goals and motivations are simple, become as strong as he can. His main relationships with other characters in the series are that of training partners or rivals such as Ken, Sagat, and Sakura, or masters that he can learn from, such as Goken, Dalsim, or Oro. His character is also represented well in his gameplay. His character's simplicity matches well with his simplicity in gameplay, being the default Shoto that's easy to pick up and play. It also lines up with his strategy. Ryu's focused on developing his fundamental skills as a martial artist, and his design in most games revolves around careful footsies, with punishing, and short, powerful combos. Altogether, this is a very solid foundation for our protagonist, but as the games continued and Capcom fleshed out his story, Ryu's character would change and develop from this simple archetype to one of complexity, for better and for worse. Early on in his life, Ryu fights a guard, and almost kills him with an especially powerful Metsu Shoryuken, leaving him with his famous chest scar. This near-fatal attack was powered by a dark force awakened in Ryu, by his previous defeat at Sagat's hands, later known as the Satsui no Hado, a force that awakens the deep-rooted, primal desire to kill that fighters usually hold back. This power is what grants Akuma his ungodly strength, as he has almost entirely given himself to the killing intent, in his quest to go beyond the limits of humanity. It should be noted that Akuma, despite his localized name, is not inherently evil, he simply considers morality an obstruction on the path to strength. Akuma encourages Ryu to join him, as he believes their goals are the same. However, Ryu, being a noble warrior focused on honest strength, spends the rest of his life trying to avoid succumbing to this evil power. He, of course, doesn't succeed. Evil Ryu, his alter ego possessed by the Satsui no Hado, first appears in the Street Fighter Alpha series. Here, Evil Ryu is a literal palace walk of Ryu acting as a bridge between Ryu and Akuma in both character and gameplay. Unlike Ryu's noble aspirations to become a better martial artist, Evil Ryu simply wishes to become the strongest there is by any means necessary, just as Akuma does. In game, his pressure is strong and he gains more moves borrowed from Akuma, such as the Ashura Senku Teleport and even the Raging Demon, the ultimate technique granted by the Satsui no Hado that doesn't just kill the opponent, but destroys their soul. Later, in Street Fighter 4, Evil Ryu reappears with a drastic, more demonic redesign and a very different personality. Here he's almost sociopathic, lacking empathy and viewing humanity itself as weakness. Fittingly, Evil Ryu is one of the best characters in Street Fighter 4 alongside Akuma, thanks to their shared strong, varied tools and high damage, especially in the hands of players like Daigo or Sako. While this may not necessarily have been deliberate by Capcom, it is interesting that Evil Ryu and Akuma, two of the most powerful characters in the lore, consistently top the Street Fighter 4 tier list. I love Evil Ryu, as a concept and an execution. He occupies a classic and effective archetype, yin and yang, or moral duality. Evil Ryu acts as the bloodlust-filled demon to contrast Ryu's noble knight. This archetype is nothing new, being common even if you just look at other fighting games, but its cliché nature doesn't make it any less powerful. Ryu's desperation to stay on the true path and not give in to its powerful allure is the core conflict of his character and adds much needed depth to it. While Akuma acts as a temptress to the Satsui no Hado, giving well thought out reasons for Ryu to give in, and his own strength as proof that it works, Evil Ryu is the terrifying end of the world outcome that keeps Ryu noble. Unfortunately, Evil Ryu did not reappear in Street Fighter V. Instead we have Kage. It's not at all a hot take to say Kage's design isn't great, but I will say that I don't hate Kage as much as most people do. Hell, I played him as my main for about a year. Compared to previous Evil Ryu designs, even designs in non-Street Fighter games such as Marvel vs Capcom Infinite, 
It really lacks that important, inhuman, genuinely scary aspect. The traditional Oni horns and fangs are a nice idea, but in execution, he just looks like Ryu with a tan and some LED horns thrown on. This is made even worse by the existence of another, much better designed character also called Oni. Kage's concept is also very similar to that of Oni, beyond just appearance, being physical vessels for the Satsui no Hado, without any morality or inner conflict slowing them down. At the very least, one redeeming quality of Kage is his fighting style, acting as an even more brutal version of Evil Ryu's, maintaining many of his moves and thus remaining a fun and relatively powerful character to play. His version of the Raging Demon is even more bloodthirsty than Akuma's, seemingly ripping the opponent to pieces. His aesthetics and gameplay aside, Kage's writing makes his story, and reused by proxy, much worse. After training once more with Goken in the end of Street Fighter 4, and tapping into the Muno Ken to defeat Nakali in Street Fighter 5, Ryu seems to have dispelled the Satsu no Hado from his soul and rid himself of all its temptations. This unfortunately resulted in his shadow manifesting itself as a new, sentient being, Kage. Separating the Satsu no Hado from Ryu is a novel concept, and one I think has potential. Why not let him physically fight the inner demons that have been plaguing him this whole time? The problem arises in Kage's story mode. Kage attempts to convince Ryu that he's nothing without the Satsui no Hado, and his only option is to give in and become truly strong like him. As the story continues, Kage taunts Sagat and fights him, only for Sagat to express disappointment that Kage is not a real man like the Ryu he fought, and informing him that he feels no fear towards him. Kage, offended, disappears in anger. Akuma then calls Kage a soulless silhouette, mocking him for being a simple, rage-filled monster with no principles. And finally, Kage approaches Ryu, his stronger half, infuriated that he is not feared. Ryu simply smiles and dismisses Kage, telling him that he can do whatever he likes, Ryu no longer cares. While this is an excellent character moment for Ryu, it simultaneously makes Kage an absolute wimp. The entirety of his character story consists of him approaching fighters stronger than him, crying in rage when they dismiss him as an empty ghoul, and disappearing from existence after realising Ryu simply doesn't care. If this was truly the dark alter ego hiding inside Ryu all along, it makes the previous appearances of evil Ryu a lot less threatening by proxy, knowing how much of a coward Ryu's possessor apparently is. Even Nakali, who was introduced in Street Fighter V as a soul-eating ancient monster, and then defeated with little effort from Ryu without ever truly harming anyone, is more of a threat than him. Kage is nothing. As of Street Fighter V, evil Ryu is dead. As mentioned earlier, Ryu was helped by Goken in overcoming the Satsui no Hado and expelling it from his body, creating Kage. In turn, Ryu tapped into an alternative force, the Mu no Ken. Contrasting the Satsui no Hado, the Mu no Ken is a state of enlightenment, granting transcendent knowledge and power. By the end of Street Fighter V, Ryu has mastered this technique, using it to defeat Nikali and prevent him from consuming his soul. And I'm just going to let this scene play out, as it's actually handled beautifully and it treats this important character moment with respect. As Street Fighter V leads into Street Fighter III Third Strike, because Capcom has refused to push their narrative beyond a 20 year old game, this follows into how Third Strike Ryu no longer has any connection to the Satsui no Hado, and only performs pure techniques, such as the Denjin Hadouken and Shin Shoryuken. So the question is, what will Ryu be in the eventual Street Fighter VI? Removing Ryu's internal conflict entirely was a bold move. It's undeniably an effective resolution to a decades long character arc, allowing the noble hero to finally overcome their dark side but I think it will have lasting consequences for his depth as a character. While he does have character beyond it, it was a major part of what defined him. Separating Kage from Ryu spawned a new character and some questionable storytelling, but it robbed Ryu of important aspects of his character. This choice may even end up somewhat pointless, as the limited story given to him and lukewarm fan reception indicates Kage may not return. 
It would be a genuine shame to lose this hyper aggressive bridge between Ryu and Akuma in the next game, especially considering the legacy of Evil Ryu throughout the series. It's possible Capcom could reintroduce Evil Ryu as a non canon ghost character, similar to Yun's appearance in Street Fighter Alpha 3 via time travel, maintaining their narrative while also including a beloved fighter. As for Ryu himself, this new chapter in his arc could introduce some interesting new ideas in his gameplay and story, assuming that Capcom does indeed move past Street Fighter 3 in the timeline. But Udon Comics recently featured Shin Ryu, an incarnation that could control both the Munoken and Satsumi no Hado simultaneously. While I don't think Ryu will ever be changed too drastically, being the poster child of the series and maintaining his primary moveset for decades, the inclusion of some moves from the Dark Force, such as an air fireball, shooting straight forward like Kage's to differentiate from Akuma's, would wrap up his arc nicely. This could show through gameplay that Ryu no longer fears the techniques with the brutal style, and can now use them separately to his previous inner conflict. And while it's still unknown how Street Fighter VI's meter mechanics will function, an ability to temporarily unleash the Munoken for a huge buff to his fundamental aspects, and perhaps some new moves, similar to his Hado Kakase Super in Marvel's Capcom 3, would solidify this version of Ryu as a master of Anatsuken, the Munoken, and the Sasuke no Hado all at the same time, finally becoming the ultimate martial artist he's trained his life to be. Whatever happens in the future, I'm looking forward to seeing the next chapter of the Wandering Warriors story. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me gush and rant about Street Fighter lore for about 10 minutes. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps me out a lot. The response to my last video was absolutely insane, and I'd like to give a special thank you to all of these awesome people for sharing my videos, boosting my content, and helping me with the creating process. They all deserve your attention and subscription, so please check them out. I've been getting more and more into the groove of making videos recently, and hopefully that's showing in their quality as I go on. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.